Hello everyone, I'm Jack Fisher and welcome to my world. And once again, I'd like to welcome a good friend and fellow YouTuber into that world, DC Marvel Girl 1997. A while back, she was nice enough to lend her talented voice to this channel. She took an old piece of fan fiction I wrote years ago and gave it life, channeling the voice of Jean Grey for a scene from my X-Men Supreme series. I was very pleased with how it turned out, and I can't thank her enough for contributing her talent, her time, and her voice. If you haven't checked it out, please do so. Now, she's offered to do it again. This time, she hopes to channel her inner Southern Belle to voice Rogue. Once again, she'll bring to life another scene from X-Men Supreme. Specifically, Rogue's entry into Supreme Reflections, which takes part just after Volume 1, Mutant Revolution. As I did with the rest of the X-Men in this series, I rewrote and rebuilt Rogue's character from the ground up. Now, there are a lot of similarities to the source material, when writing this fanfiction series, I tried to incorporate a little of everything. The main inspirations I drew from were some of the recent comics, the X-Men Evolution cartoon, and the original X-Men movie trilogy. In essence, I tried to make the best version of Rogue that I could. And Supreme Reflections, the series of vignettes that I use to dig deeper into certain characters, is a great way to appreciate this vision for this sassy southern mutant. The full link to the chapter and the rest of the fanfiction series is in the description, as is a link to DC Marvel Girl's YouTube channel. Again, I can't thank her enough for doing this. Our respective worlds are more awesome because of it. And now, without further ado, I give you X-Men Supreme Reflections Rogue, as voiced by DC Marvel Girl 1997. Enjoy! What's in a name? Why do people insist on going by a label someone else gave them? Why is there only one way to really set ourselves apart from the billions of other folks out there? They're walking the streets, going about their business, and not giving two hoots about the rest of the world. So what do we gain when we throw on a high-tech uniform, run out to where we're least welcome, and try to save a world that would rather ignore us. I used to ask myself that question all the time. Now, I'm wondering why more people ain't asking it. I've done so much thinking ever since I joined the X-Men. Time was, thinking was about sixth or seventh on my list of responses. I know full well how dumb it is to just act without thinking things through. I've been on the wrong end of way too many shenanigans these past few years. Got in class, going to clubs, fooling around with exotic medicines when I ain't sick. Heck, I'm the kind of gal that ought to be boasting about her arrest record by now. It's crazy how much can change even for an unapologetic rebel. I've officially divided my life into two phases. Before the X-Men, I was Anna Marie Darkholm, the problem child with an eccentric foster mother whose idea of bonding time involved teaching advanced kung fu techniques. I was living the life of someone who had no future. I was angry at the whole dang world. Guess that qualifies as an overreaction of sorts because I really didn't start lashing out until my mama jumped ship. But even before that, I knew something was seriously wrong. Professor Xavier once told me we're all products of our parents in some ways, whether we like it or not. He never said that it applied to adopted kids, but he doesn't really have to. I got that answer firsthand. So much of my childhood was spent training. Mama and Irene went out of their way to make sure I was the toughest, strongest kid in Mississippi. I don't know if every parent wants their kids to be tough, but even if they do, I'm pretty sure Mystique overdid it. She didn't just teach me how to defend myself. She taught me how to fight the whole world. Nobody could be trusted, and everybody could be a potential enemy. The kind of mindset will scare the heck out of an eight-year-old gal and make her pretty dang paranoid in the process. I don't know if it was Mama's intention. Heck, it could have been for all I know. But all that training taught me to fight back at a world that didn't understand me. 
problem is, I didn't understand it either. It, it ain't like I didn't try. For reasons I still ain't sure of, Mama cut me off from the world. I wasn't allowed to have friends. I wasn't allowed to put myself out there. I wasn't allowed to be normal. By the time she left me with Irene, it was too late. There was no going back. Irene thought I earned a little independence. I bet she regrets that decision every day of her life. The woman can see the future, but even she can't predict how an unstable teenage gal is going to thrust herself into the world. It sure didn't help my first taste of the world was Mississippi Public School. I might as well have run naked through my field. Ain't no way that was going to be anything less than a disaster. The sad part is, public school was almost as rough as my mama's parenting. Only this time, I wasn't afraid to fight back. It sure got me in trouble. Heck, it's the only good that came out of it was I met people who introduced me to smoking, drugs, and clothes that weren't handpicked by a blind woman. It was an endless cycle. People tried to control me so I fought back. They tried to control me even more so I fought back even harder. I really didn't have a chance. Everybody just assumed I was angry. But the truth is it wasn't like that. Anger is easy. Any fella can lash out at something they don't like. Hell, Wolverine practically makes it an art form. My problem was never anger. It was isolation. All my life, I wanted to reach out to people. But there was always something in my way. First it was my mama. Then it was everybody else joined in. When she got out of the way, I couldn't find anybody who understood me. I couldn't relate to anyone on damn near anything. I wanted to and... For a time, I was ready to give up. Then, I entered the next phase of my life. When I met up with the X-Men, Anna Marie Darkholm took a back seat and Rogue took over. Some still don't understand why I go by Rogue. That new girl, Kitty, sure can't resist running her yap about it. Everybody assumes it's my way of flipping the bird to the world of conformity. It's a totally rabble thing to do. You abandon the name you were given and take on one you pick for yourself. But the reason I'm rogue has less to do with hating the world and more to do with taking a new path in life. Being an X-Man hasn't just given me an opportunity to make my life worth a damn. It's given me a new identity. I didn't like who I was as Marie. I didn't like what I was becoming and what my mama was trying to turn me into. When I started thinking of myself as rogue, I finally pulled away from that life and suddenly I have a lot less reasons to hate the world. I may be a rebel, but I ain't gonna be a bitter old bitch like my mama. It took something big to shake my out of that mindset and boy did I get it. The day my powers manifested, I got a quick lesson in humanity. Suddenly, I had something I couldn't rebel against. It wasn't so much the fact that I'm a mutant that messed me up. My mama had been preparing me for that a long time. It was the kind of mutant I was that really messed me up. I didn't shape shift, teleport, or see the future. I drained the life out of people just by touching them. Suddenly, it wasn't just that folks didn't want to reach out to me when I wanted. They couldn't without putting themselves in a world of hurt. It was rough, that's for sure. But in ways, it was good for me. It put me in a place where I never would have gone otherwise. It forced me to look at myself in the mirror and stop fighting things I shouldn't fight. I had to suck it up humble myself, and forget a lot of what Mystique taught me about the world. That's what ended up making me rogue. I suddenly realized my life was never going to be the same. 
I would be a danger to myself and others if I didn't take control. It's a good thing the X-Men were there to help me because now I'm in a place where I feel like I can turn that danger into something positive. I ain't just what I want to be. I'm what I should be. A few months before my powers kicked in, Irene sat me down and tried to lecture me again. I honestly didn't hear much of what she said, but I remembered the parts that mattered. She pointed out how I'm still holding back. For all the bullshit I put her through, it could have been a lot worse. She called my attitude petty. She went so far as to say she knows I'm still a good girl at heart because I haven't shut everything out. Her mistake was assuming that she was one of them. She was dead wrong. Irene's heart was always in the right place. But like Mystique, she's cold. Empathy really ain't one of her strengths because if it was, she wouldn't have underplayed all those letters I still kept in my dresser. Those letters weren't from Mystique. I stopped getting those a long time ago. Those letters were from my foster brother in Europe. Those dirty pieces of paper came in line. Then all the parenting Mystique and Irene could ever muster. Those letters helped me remind me that the world ain't always what we're conditioned to accept. It's pretty messed up. I've only seen pictures of my foster brother and he's only seen pictures of me. For whatever crazy reason, my mama was pretty serious about keeping us apart. But that didn't stop us from connecting. It says something about my family when the guy I ain't ever seen face to face understands me better than the two people who tried to raise me. That was my anchor. That's what kept me from going over the edge. I ain't heard from him in a while, but I managed to get one last letter to him letting him know I'm starting a new life with the X-Men. If it wasn't for him, I never would have made all the right decisions that led me here. There ain't a better place for a gal like me. One who has the god-awful look of having a power that has way more potential for harm than good.